you so much, Janet, and thank you so much for the invitation to join you in this wonderful event tonight. It really is a great pleasure to be speaking alongside such extraordinary people from, from all over the world and, of course, from, from the UK and from London as well. Um, as some of you might know, I was raised politically in the anti-racist tradition of the African National Congress in South Africa during the struggle against apartheid. Um, and of course, under that system, there was a total lack of freedom of political assembly, freedom of expression, freedom of speech, freedom of the media. We sometimes forget that people were jailed even simply for having a likeness of Nelson Mandela, not even a picture, just a shadowy likeness. In the South African struggle against apartheid, there were many extraordinary Jews who, who played a very important role in that struggle. People like Joe Slovo, Ruth First, Rusty Bernstein, Arthur Goldreich, Dennis Goldberg, Jill Marcus, and many, many more. There were, of course, many Jews in the country who were complicit with the apartheid system. We sometimes forget oh. that Nelson Mandela's prosecutor at his treason trial was a Jewish South African by the name of Percy Utah, who sought the death penalty against Mandela. The South African Jewish Board of Deputies criticized apartheid for the first time in its entire history in 1985. Now, having lived through the struggle to free South Africa from apartheid, having had the honor of serving under Mandela in South Africa's first democratic government, I didn't expect when moving to the United Kingdom over 20 years ago to face some of the same restrictions on speaking out about apartheid existing in Israel, in speaking out about the plight of Palestine and the Palestinian people. It is astonishing to me how difficult it is as an anti-racist Jew in the United Kingdom and in many parts of the European Union too, how difficult it is to talk about Palestine openly, to criticize Israel openly, to promote the boycott, divestment and sanctions movement, which of course was so crucial in bringing about an end to apartheid in South Africa. Now, as a Jew living in London, of course the sorts of restrictions we face are nothing like those faced by Palestinian people trying to speak out in their own cause. There is an attempt, a conscious attempt, to silence Palestinian voices, to make Palestinians effectively non-people. I'm sure you've heard tonight, and there are many people here from Jewish Voice for Labor and other organizations who have suffered this personally and directly. But as a Jew in Keir Starmer's Labor Party, you are five times more likely than any other member of the party to be investigated, suspended, or expelled for anti-Semitism. Let's think about that for a moment. Keir Starmer, a human rights lawyer, now leader of the Labour Party, is expelling Jewish members 
far more than any other members of the Labour Party, in order to deal with anti-Semitism? It is my contention that anti-Semitism is being weaponized by the most reactionary elements in mainstream politics to silence the left and to neutralize Palestine as an issue. And this is being done predominantly and overwhelmingly by non-Jews who seem to have given themselves the right to decide who is a proper Jew and who is not. In so doing, they are undermining the very real and crucial struggle against anti-Semitism, against Islamophobia, and against all forms of racism that are on the rise exponentially in the United Kingdom, in Europe, and across much of the world. BDS, as I mentioned, so central to the struggle against apartheid, is being made a topic that is not allowed to be spoken. There are attempts to make it illegal to support BDS in the United Kingdom, just as in the case in Germany and in Austria. It is my view that because of our history as Jews, we have a responsibility more than most to speak out wherever we see injustice whoever the perpetrators of that injustice because of our history of injustice being done to us. We have a choice. We can live as Jews like Percy Utah did. And we can be complicit in a system of racial oppression the degradation of human rights and the undermining of justice and equality. Or we can live the life of Jews like Dennis Goldberg, who gave up everything to join the struggle against apartheid in South Africa, who stood in the dock alongside Nelson Mandela at his treason trial and when they were given life sentences for treason, where they thought they would get the death penalty, and his elderly Jewish mother in the audience shouted to Dennis, what did the judge say? Dennis, what did he say? What did you get? Dennis's response, loudly and triumphantly to his mother, it is life, mother, it is life, and life, is beautiful. Thank you so much.